Okay, today we're going to take a look at how Windows 11 has Time Machine, but not really Time Machine, but something very close in the Windows version of it. So let's get started, have a look on how to set up Windows 11 file history. So we have our Windows 11 here set up. It's fully updated as of November 10th, 2021. We can see here we have our important document. Let's take a look. This is an important document and this is the important information. And say we want to be able to do what Time Machine does for Mac OS, but in Windows which would mean that you would have a file history and file history backup of this file on a different disk that you can take with you or leave it on the machine. And if you ever delete this file or it becomes corrupted or it changes in some way, you would be able to recover this data. So let's go ahead and enable that. So in Windows 11, we can go to the control panel or the settings panel. We can go to accounts and we can go to Windows Backup. But you'll notice that this only pertains to your Microsoft OneDrive account. This backup needs a OneDrive account to be enabled, which also means that you need to have internet access. Now, you could say OneDrive is free. You get, I think it's 15 gigabytes of data to sync with your OneDrive account. Just sign up with Microsoft create an Outlook account or create a Microsoft account and you'll have that for free. However, you would still need to connect to the internet. And we all know we're not always connected to the internet with our laptops or our desktops. And maybe we'd like to have a local copy. So this might not apply to you. And if the data is exceeding the free 15 gigabytes, then you're kind of out of luck. If you have more than that to back up, which you most likely do. So we can go down to the search menu or the start menu and type in control. And this will allow us to access the Windows 10 classic control panel. Select that and it opens up. Next, we'll go to system and security, or you can click on save backup copies of your files with file history. That's what we want. And we can see here that this was enabled at one point for this machine on the network storage that I have. So what we can do is we can say select drive on the left here. And we wait for the list to populate and it detects my Kingston 256 gig USB drive. We'll select that and click OK. And it just is indicating that it had some previous files on the network share and we can move those. We're going to say no, we're going to start this over. So our file history is currently on, it is running, and the last copy was now. And we can see that it was at 125. So we can go to our advanced settings, and we can select how often our files are going to be saved and copied, uh, and when the modifications will be synced with our drive. So the default right now is every hour, and we can go with forever, which is the default. Let's select that. And we don't need to save the changes, but we can click on save changes anyways to get us back to this part here. So in one hour from now, we should have this run again. But in the meantime, we can just demonstrate how this works. We currently have our file there. So if we go on to our Kingston 256 gig, we can see our file history here. There's the TechWorks user. The machine, the data, C drive, users, tech works, all of the documents and folders that are necessary to keep backups for this user. So we can see desktop and there is the important file. So let's make a modification to this file. Let's just say some of this gets deleted. And we can click on run now. It's detected some changes and the time now has updated. This will automatically go in one hour. So let's just pretend it's one hour later. And we can see here the files have been updated. Now you could just copy this file original from here to here, drag and drop. Pretty simple, pretty accessible. 
There is, however, also a interface for this. You can select here the restore personal files and it will give you an interface just like this where we can go back in time and forward in time for every hour and select which day we want and so on and so forth. So we want to recover the file from the desktop on 125. There it is there. And we can see what the file is. If we want to recover it. We select it. We'll see here. There is our file that has been damaged or edited. We can select the file in the user interface for file history and then select the green button to restore to the original location. And then we'll get the option. Compare it, skip it, or replace it. Uh, if you're recovering this file, you'll probably want to replace it. Select replace, off you go. And we can see here, our file has been recovered. So this operates very closely to the way Time Machine operates on Mac OS. It's fairly reliable. The interface is a little bit old. This is reminiscent of Windows 7 for sure. It just doesn't have the arrow glass effect on it. But this, this window screams Windows 7. It could use some polishing and some updating, but it does work and it works well. It's pretty reliable from what I've seen. I've been using it for a little while. I wish it was a little bit more forward in maybe the backup section of the new user interface with Windows 11 in the settings context menu here, where you can select to do file history backups or backups here. Now there was one other thing that we can do here in the control panel in regards to backups. So when we get back to our file history, we can see here at the bottom, there is a system image backup option. This is the sim system image backup that is still left in Windows 11 all the way back from Windows 7. It still functions the same. It has the same interface and it works the same. We can say set up a backup. It will bring up this starting Windows backup window. We can select the drive. And then typically we would select the recommended option or you can choose to specifically have which files and directories and libraries you want to be backing up. This will either increase or decrease the size depending on which you want to include or exclude. So just make sure that your drive is capable of holding all of the files that you wish to have. Okay, so in this case you will get a system image and all of the users will be backed up. Save and run your backup. And this will begin. So the advantage to this is if you need to restore your full system and you need to have all of the libraries and all of the users and the applications and stuff like that re-imaged back onto a machine, you can use this. Whereas with the file history, it's mostly just your documents. If your machine became corrupted or damaged and you needed to replace it, the file history wouldn't help you with getting your applications reinstalled and stuff like that. You would need to reinstall Windows, reinstall the applications, and restore the files for those applications separately. It would probably be a little bit more work than just to recover from a Windows image. So it's nice that it still has this option. Although it is something left over from Windows 7 and isn't improved by any stretch of the imagination in Windows 11, hopefully they will work on this in the future to have a little bit better accessibility to these options because they are there and they do work. It's just not well known in Windows as it is in, say, the competition like Mac OS and Time Machine. So I hope this has helped you out and keeping your files safe and having them backed up and being able to restore them and recovering them fairly quickly without a third party backup solution. This should get you by. It works pretty well and I've been using it for a while. I hope I see you in the next video with your files recovered. Thanks for watching. Bye.